change makers I come to you for this final section heaven will impact your life God our creator will turn you around and remake you and recreate you even tonight before you go in Jesus name I salute all our speakers and all our sisters who are here both on this side and that side and I pray the impact of this change makers international the made in edition will not leave you the way you came you'll carry the change back home I will carry the change back home just one word before I begin don't let the baby die let this baby live I mean the change makers international is being born you have given birth to it now all of us will nurture this baby this baby will grow and this baby will turn around our nation as we join hands and hearts together to make sure that this baby does not die it will not die in your house change makers will not die in your community change makers will not die in this nation in the globe change makers will not die let everybody say amen. amen father god in heaven we come today wanting you to turn every life around for the better do it lord that we will become the change agents for the better in our community and country and all over the globe thank you lord we know we will see the result of what you have started here in jesus name i pray thank you very much you can sit down tonight as we bring a women conference to a close i'm talking on recreating a purpose driven change maker we see the change we envision the change we want to plug into the change we want to remain a change maker but a purpose driven change maker that we have a purpose we have a goal we have an end we have a destination and we're driving towards that purpose and that goal we need the, re the recreating power of god almighty uh, you you would have heard of david he prayed a prayer in psalm 51 verse 10 he said create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me for a change maker we need another heart that god himself creates create in me many times we look at others he ought to change she ought to change we think a problem is the problem of the people in our community who are not changing if they could change life would be better for me if my teachers could change if mommy could change if daddy could change if all the siblings if they could change life would be better for me but here david prayed the prayer we ought to pray create in me a clean heart a heart that is cleansed from hatred 
from bitterness, from always looking back. That happened, that happened. And because of those things that happened, that's why I'm changed now. It says now, I need a new heart. And it says, what I want of God, what I want of my creator, I add a first creation. That's why I'm here. That's why I am living. But now, I need another creation. And it's a creation of my heart. Why? Because the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. The heart of the matter, any matter you are thinking about, the nucleus there, the center there, the heart there is a matter of the heart. The direction my heart goes, the direction I go. And the mountain my heart looks at and I want to climb. That is how it starts. The change of heart, the cleansing of the heart, and the renewal of the heart. And he, he directed the prayer to God, whichever one of us ought to do. Because ultimately, it's God, our creator, that makes that change. And he said, renew a right spirit. Think of that. The spirit, the thoughts, the mind, the inner feeling, the inner emotion. If those six are walking, they're looking in the wrong direction. Life will go in the wrong direction. But if your spirit, your internal existence, your mind, your soul, and the emotion within you, if that one is renewed, your life is renewed tonight. And any time you want to do something, and you say, I'm going to do this. Jesus asks John and James, you don't know of what spirit you are of. It's the spirit that makes us decide, the spirit that makes us determine, the spirit that makes us discourage, and the spirit that says there's no point going on, I'll be doing good, what is the result? I won't do any more. It's the spirit within us. But if God recreates us, which he's going to do tonight. I said he's going to do tonight. He creates a new heart in us. And then he renews a right spirit within me. Look at that. In me and within me. And it is when that takes place on the inside. Your external, everything around you from tonight will begin to go well. My daughter... My sister, my mother there, from tonight, you will do well. You will go well. And every project you had abandoned now from tonight, you will start again. I have three questions I'm asking. Number one question, who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a virtuous woman. The second question, who can free a victimized woman? We've been hearing our speakers talking about victimization. And we say it from this angle, this angle, and that angle. We all understand. We have felt it. We have seen the pressure of, com of the community. We are victimized. But the question is, who can Free, a victimized woman. That is the third question. The third question is, who can form a value-driven woman? And I want to see every young lady here. I want to see every middle-aged lady here that you have value. And you are driven by that value. Every morning you wake up, there is value that you pursue. And you say, I am a woman of purpose, a woman of virtue, a woman of value. And I wake up, here is my subject. Here is my life. I study that life. Uh, we go to school, we study this and study this and study this. The last subject 
the essential subject, the important subject, the indispensable subject. We didn't study. I didn't study myself. What do I have upstairs? I didn't study myself. What goal do I have in life? I didn't study myself. Why am I always starting a project and I drop it? Why do I have so many unfinished projects in my life? I didn't study that. I didn't study people like me who also achieved, like our speakers who have been speaking to us. They were not born with silver spoons in their mouth. How did they do it? So I applied to myself. We study many subjects. We don't study ourselves. That's why number three says, who can form and reform? Who can make and remake? Who can fashion and refashion? Who can mold a value-driven woman? I could tell you the answer. Maybe you know the answer. There's a God in heaven who is looking at your life. And who says your life will not be purposeless. Your life will have value. You know something that has value? If we're going to buy, we'll buy with a large sum of money. You'll not be a mediocre crawling through life. Because your life your achievement, your dream, your vision will have value for our nation. Who can form a value-driven woman? Let's look at question number one. Question number one, who can find a virtuous woman? Uh, there is always a place for a virtuous woman. Anywhere, in any community, there's always a place. Just stand up. Just show up. Just prepare yourself and be virtuous enough that you will be able, you will be prepared to do what no other woman in the community can do. They're not looking for the name. They're looking for the virtue. They're looking for the preparedness. They're looking for that woman, that lady, that is well made. They're not asking for your religion. They're not asking for where do you come from? I remember when I was you know, a teacher and I taught mathematics. When I got to the class, I wasn't looking for Christian or Muslim. I was looking for the people that had what it takes to learn. And whatever the village they came from, I didn't ask them. Whatever religion they practice, I didn't ask them. And thank God, I have quite a lot of them from this side, from this side, from everywhere that have now become value-driven people. And that's why I came here. I want to pick you up where you are. And I want to introduce you to such a power that will never fail in your life. Now, look at that in, a Psalm, in a Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Who can find? Who can find? Who can find? Anybody looking for a wife? Who can find a virtuous woman? Anybody looking for a professional? Who can find a virtuous woman? Anybody looking for a dependable person? That I can leave all my money in his hand or her hand, and everything will be managed well. All they're looking for is a virtuous woman. Anybody looking for good students that have a desire to learn, what they're looking for, who can find a virtuous woman. They're looking for a leader. They're not looking for gender. They're not looking for man or woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? The world is searching, and the world is looking. And if you prepare yourself, I believe one of these days, I will see you on the top. Yeah. Who can find a virtuous woman? And then it says, for her price is far above rubies. You might say above dollars, 
above pound sterling, above any currency. Uh, there are times you go for an interview. And as you go for the interview, uh, the, you know what you have, you know your stuff, and you know what you can do, and you know what you can bring to that company. And now they might ask you, What value you are and they say what salary are you expecting and if you think about your background about your life yes you know you have the knowledge you know what it, you know you have what it takes but they ask you directly and you say what are you going what do you expect to earn if your mind tells you be very careful be moderate, be humble, because you might lose the job if you say this high amount. Well, the value you put on yourself, the virtue you exhibit will come out in your answer. Well, I, I just want to have a job. I don't like to be jobless. Whatever you give me, they already size you up. That's your mind. That's your thinking. That's what you think you can have, but without any pride. If you say, I'm expecting actually because what I am bringing in is going to turn this place around for the better. And I'm going to put you on the map that people who never knew this company will know this company. This is what I expect they look at each other, the interviewers, the panel, and they say, looks like she's of great value. You'll be of great value. Yeah. And you walk like that. And you talk like that. Can I say, <laughs> you also dress like that. You know, the way you dress gives you confidence. You're going for this interview. And uh, you know the, the, the clothes that are good for the kitchen, that are good in-house, they're not good enough for the thing you're looking for. You dress up, you talk up, you look up, you shape up, and you, you stand as a confident, virtuous woman. And somebody said, if you don't think you are, you are like that, Fake it until you make it. You didn't hear that one. Fake it until you make it. If you are thinking on the inside, I'm not worthy of much, don't show them that. Don't allow your facial appearance to show them that. Smile. I mean, a good, good smile. A confident smile. And you know you are prepared. You will get the job. Yeah. Give me a better amen there. Yeah. Who can find, find a virtuous woman. And I say when companies are looking for somebody that will do them great. They will find you. Yeah. Somebody honest. They will find you. Yeah. Somebody strategic, they will find you. Somebody who is climbing up and will take everybody around you up, they will find you. Who can find a virtuous woman? The president will find you. The governor will find you. Good companies will find you. <laughs> you know, I hope your amen is from the heart. That the next time I see you and we have opportunity to talk, I ball to eyeball. You see, Pastor, I have a testimony. And I'll be all ears wanting to know. But the bottom line is they found you a virtuous woman. Look at verse 16 there. In verse 16, it says. She considers a field. You know, if we're going to be virtuous, we consider the field might be education. 
The field might be medicine. The field might be technology. The field might be family community. The field might be anywhere improvement is needed. And a virtuous woman will consider that field. It's a field maybe far away from home. A field might be near the home, but not a field in the sitting room. Not a field in the inner chamber. It is a field out there. I need to cultivate that field. I need to gather fruit out of that field. I need to make a difference out of that field. I'm sure you've seen the fields as you travel along the road. And for years, the field has been there. No fruit, no planting, no cultivation. Until somebody looked up and said, there must be a farm there. And they clear it up. We need to do the clearing before we can plant anything there. Then, apart from the clearing, there is the cultivation. Apart from that, we're looking at the field, we're looking at the society. We're looking at what the society needs, and we're bringing something out of that place that the community needs. She considers and buys it. There's price to pay. Because every good thing comes out of sweating. Everything good comes out of working, planting, laboring. And she buys it. And I pray that in your life, whatever good thing the Lord has purposed for you, you will pay the price. You know, even coming here is part of paying the price. You didn't know what you were going to hear. And yet you said, I'll be there. You paid the price of time. In life, we have to pay the price of time. Learning, time. Unlearning something, time. Relearning something, time. Doing what I never did before, time. Doing what I feel, can I do this? Is it women's field? Is this women's area? You need to pay a price, but the price will set. The outcome will be greater than any price you are paying. Climbing, you'll pay some price. Identifying what you will do, what you will be in life, will pay the price. You will pay the price, then you become precious. Sister Precious, where are you? Mommy Precious, where are you? Daughter Precious, where are you? Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. And then it says, with the fruit of her hands. It's not something somebody will appeal for. It's not something somebody she wants to write. And then she's into plagiarism. That is, copy what other people do to make that out. No, you're self-reliant. And you say, by the strength, by the work of my hand, here is what I'm going to do. And here is what I am going to be. Nobody will stop you. Nobody will hinder you. Your heart is stronger than your hindrances. Hindrances, they'll be there. But when you have a heart that you say, I am going there. What if there's no vehicle? I am going there. What if there's no aeroplane? I am going there. What if there is no supporter? I am going there. Am I talking to somebody there? You will reach where you decide, you determine, you will go. I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. And then it says, she planted a vineyard. She planted a vineyard. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, woman, is that women's area? I am planting a vineyard. Women, many, many years ago, they were not driving buses. 
driving a public vehicle, but somebody said, I'm going to geology. I'm a woman, I'm going to do it. And they're doing it. You will do it. Many years ago, we entered the aeroplane and they say the pilot, and they always mentioned a man. But now, a woman said, I'll break that jinx. I will be a pilot. Many people, they are now pilots. You know, in a nation, many people, you want to be a governor? Well, it's the field for a man. But I believe there are women here who will become governors. It's the, it's the place you want to reach. You will reach there. What women have not done in your community, your time has come, stand up, show up. We will know that we have found a virtuous woman, a dedicated woman, a determined woman. I read about a woman who in her earlier days and years did not go to school. And she became 40. She had not thought of going back to school. Eventually, she became 63 years of age. And she decided at that time, some people say, a fool at 40, tell me, is a fool forever. Some people have even drunk back years. A fool at 20 now. Is a fool forever. But this woman, 63 years of age, all the other women in society, they have forgotten about going to school. You know, she went back to school. She finished primary. She finished secondary. And then she went to university and she became a graduate. Think about that. There's nothing you cannot do if your heart is there. Your heart will be there. Another woman I read about, the husband had died. She was a widow and she had a son. And this son was very young. And she decided, I am going to educate this son. She's going to become a a graduate of a reputable university. And she went to the hospital because she was sick. And the doctors gave her six months to live. And she said, no way. She said no to death. Somebody help me shout no. no. She said there's no way I can die in six months' time because I must educate this child and she must become, he must become a graduate. And so, because of that determination, that's a virtuous woman. That's a determined woman. That's a woman that knew there is a place to go and I am going there tonight. I come to tell you there's a place you have to get to. You will get there. And that child continued. And of course, to educate that child, she had to work. She was working and the child was going to educating the child. And she went on and on. I'm talking about a widow. The widow that had a window. There'll be a window of opportunity in your life. A window of doing what you have never done in your life. And eventually, the child graduated. Hi, but what the doctor said, uh -uh. a virtuous woman with a determined heart will eventually overcome and go beyond what the doctor had said. What a doctor says concerning you is not the final sentence of your life. The heart you have, the mind you have, the determination you have that 
you say, I have this new heart. This is what I am going to do. You will do it in Jesus' name. And eventually, the child graduated. What happened to the woman? Six months after that, she died. Because she had said, this is my goal. And if she had had another goal, and she has said, after this child graduates, I want to see this done before I leave. She'll keep on extending the pole. Not now, not now, until another time. And I come to tell you that today, consider a field. Buy that field. Consider a profession. Pay what it takes to get that uh, profession. And then you will, with the fruit of your hand, you will do what you ought to do. You will plant the vineyard. I'm coming to question number two now. Question number two, who can free a victimized woman? Uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, very good to have a goal and to have a desire. But what if you are tied down? Like a tie, a goat down, around a pole. Nobody will tie you down. But you know, sometimes our mindset can tie us down. Our history can tie us down. Our brain, our mind can tie us down. And the self-talk we have inside us, I cannot do that. Daddy couldn't do that. Mommy couldn't do that. Who am I? I can't do that. Your own self-talk can tie you down. They performed an experiment uh, some time ago. An elephant was born, of course, by mother elephant. And they took a chain and they tied that elephant down. So the elephant was growing, body growing, every part growing, but when she tried to move away from the pole, the uh, chain made her stop. And only around the radius of that chain, the elephant could move up and down. Beyond that, no way. And on and on, the elephant got used to trying to go away from the pole and was hindered and stopped. And later, they changed that chain. And they changed it to just a row. Because now, the elephant had grown. The elephant could have just broken that row because there's no more a chain. But that elephant has been conditioned that this is how far you go. And many people in life are conditioned like that. What people tell them, what people want them of, what people insult them by, they have an invisible rope that is tying them down. Eventually, they removed even that rope. And the elephant remained yours obediently, remained there. Because now the elephant has been conditioned that this is how far you go in life, no more. That's how many of us have been, even men and then women. And our speakers, um, you know, elaborated quite a lot on areas we have been conditioned and we dare not think that there is any other way, any other place we can get to. It's uh, a form of victimization. Sit there. We sit there. Don't go that way. We don't go that way. Don't say that again. We don't say that again. Even when the personalities and the figures that were kind of a fear agent, when they have left, they made everything they have planted in us remain there, victimized. But today, 
all the victimization will be blown away from your life in Jesus name hey, now look at this woman this is John chapter 8 and I'm reading here from verse 10 it says when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Where are those thine accusers? Anybody can tell stories of how people in our family, in our extended families, they were the accusers. They were the people that conditioned us. And they were the people that said, you don't think you can do that to you? You don't think uh, mommy, grandma appreciates that to you? You don't think that a family norms, a family tradition will accept that to you? And because they have been speaking to us, we now internalize all they have been telling us. We accuse ourselves and to play humble. And to play acceptable in society. You know, some people even go so far as telling a lie against themselves because they become now the expert accusers of their own lives. I shouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. And now Jesus said, Where are those thine accusers? As no man condemned thee, understand. Accusation is not equal to condemnation. People may accuse, but it's you that will decide that you are condemned to mediocrity. You are condemned to never doing well. You are condemned to a failure. Whatever accusation comes against your life today, you will be able to say, yes, I did a foolish thing, but I'm not a foolish woman. I did a foolish thing, but I am not a foolish woman. You know, if you equate an action with your very life, you are gone. But if you say, yes, I did that, I shouldn't have done that, that's a foolish thing I did, but I'm not going to end up being a fool. I. Somebody there, I am not going to end up in life as a fool. You know, you become an author, you become a writer, you become a teacher, you become a counselor. You'll become somebody we look up to when we're looking for words of wisdom. And when you think about it, where you get to and where you are, there will be thousands of miles between where you are now and where you will be. Yeah. And up there, as no man condemned thee, look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, she said... No man, Lord. The time comes in your life. You have to distance yourself from the accusers and the judges. Self-appointed judges of your life. They have not judged their lives. They have not cleaned up their lives. They are doing worse than you have done. And yet, they make themselves the accusers. In this case, they all went away. And so, the woman was all alone. No man, Lord, if they don't walk away, walk away from them. I've seen, uh, excuse me, ladies, women, and somebody calls them, and they didn't tie them down. They didn't tie your leg. They didn't tie your hand. And they're raining insult, assault, abuse on them, curse on them. And they just stand there accepting all that. They stand there hearing all that. And you could have walked away. Nobody is tying you down there. Walk away from accusation. Give me a good amen. amen. Walk away from those you condemn. If you cannot encourage me, I walk away. 
If you cannot beautify my life, I walk away. If you cannot show me how to get rid of the accusation that I have, I walk away. Well, the accusers wage away. They'll go away from you. <laughs> you know, those accusers who condemn, they don't give us a chance to think. How can I better my life? What new direction could I go? They are there, they are pouring that accusation on us, abuse on us, and they are slicing us. They are cutting you short every time. And you stay there while you are there in their midst. You cannot plan to go forward. Why have you done that? Why have you done that? Now, do you give me right to also ask you, why have you said that? Why have you done that? No, you don't have that right. Okay, if I don't have the right to question you about your life, I won't give you permission to question my life. This is my life. You will not leave it for me. This is your life. Nobody will leave that life for you. Amen. Then Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. The most beautiful word that woman ever heard in her life. When she was growing up, once she did any little thing, condemnation. And when she went to school, a little mistake condemnation. And they even publicize the mistake among our classmates. And then we come out of school and we did something in condemnation. The first time in her life. And tonight maybe the first time in your life when the Almighty will say I created you. I'm going to make a better woman out of you. Yeah. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Give me a good amen there. Amen. Go and sin no more. That's, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see it as a commandment. I see it as a provision. I see it as power descending upon her. You didn't have any power not to do that before. Now, I give you the power and I give you the inner strength to go and live. A new life. Tonight, new power comes upon your life. Go and sin no more. Shout amen. amen. How do you understand that? It is say, go and don't do that particular thing again. Yes, that's included. Go and sin no more. Hey, let me give an example. What if I say I'm dumb, I'm dense, I'm foolish, I cannot learn anything, I cannot make progress. I'm saying God made a dense, dumb person. He created a non-entity. That's insult against God. To God, that will be sin. I will not say that anymore. I will not say that anymore. Negative, negative, negative things. The things that put you down. The things that condition you and make you to feel I'm the worst in the community and there is no chance of being anywhere better. Your new chance has come. Go and sin no more. Those foolish things that we used to do that reach our lives to this point. Go and sin no more. I need a better amen there. You know, when I was much, much younger, I used to think of for example, don't smoke. I looked at that as a kind of what heavy body these people are putting on me. That one is smoking, that one is smoking. Don't drink. That one is drinking, that one. I even knew people that would drink so much 
I can see the face of the man now in my mind's eye. And when he drinks to that point, it will sometimes fall down. And then he'll begin to say, the key to my wardrobe is there. The key to precious, precious things there. And I used to, as a boy, I used to just stand there. Later, I then understood drinking does not hurt the people around me, about me, as it hurts me and hurts my brain. Smoking does not hurt people beyond me as much as it could give me cancer of the lungs. I now understood it's a positive thing. All that I've been hearing, and when Jesus said, you understand, Jesus never spoke any negative word to anybody. And this one, go and see no more, is as positive as positive could be. And I give you that same word, all the foolish things we did before, not knowing the consequence, the strength of God, the power of God will come to you tonight you'll overcome them. Yeah. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, here is what Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Are you free tonight? I said, are you free tonight? That answered the question, Christ, Jesus, the truth will set you free. Who can free a victimized woman? No victimization anymore. No negative direction anymore. All the preconditioning that makes us to lean towards the negative side, the yoke of that preconditioning is broken tonight. Question number three now, who can form a value-driven woman? Who can form a value-driven woman? I don't have chance, I don't have the time to read everything to you, but when you look at the beginning of our Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. It says, The world, the earth, was without form and void. As you look at verse 31, the end of that first chapter, it says, Everything God made, God looked at it, and it was good. Good. Because we had a formless matter. And now we have a form that God has made and everything good. Everything, everyone. When God walks again in your life tonight, good. Good. Brain, good. Mind, good. Thoughts, good. Direction in life, good. God will reform your life. They say, what form? All the things around you, they put a D-E, deformed. And then you come, you're learning. I-N, you are informed. And then, after information, form, deformed, informed, now you are reformed. Who am I talking to there? Something happens tonight. And the Lord reforms your life. Look at this. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. Look at this. Isaiah 43 verse 7. And look for the word. It says, even everyone, man or woman, woman now, everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. We're going to give God a chance tonight to enter into your territory 
and change everything that needs to be changed in your heart, in your life, in your head, in your hands, in your personality, in Jesus' name. Look at another verse there, verse 21. In verse 21, here is what it says. These people have I formed for myself. For myself. What does that mean? God created the world, the earth, and then he formed us to go and make that world fruitful, make that world pleasurable, make that world desirable, make that world well cultivated. And he said, these let's people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Your own time has now come. Amen. That God, the God of heaven, will do as much as we expect. Remember, the God who created us initially, who formed us initially, we became deformed. Now, you are informed that a better day has come. And you take that information and you appeal to the God of heaven, then he will reform you. And as you go out of here tonight, you are not the same person that came in. Yeah. I said you are not the same person that came in. Yeah. From your mind, to your heart, to your soul, to your spirit, to your brain, to your head, and to your whole personality. A reformation and renewal is coming. Yeah. And he said, I, that's God of heaven, the God of heaven talking, I have formed him, have formed her for myself. We come now into the factory of God where he remakes lives. He turns lives around for the better. And you, your life will be turned around for the better. Every negative thing, I've never done well, I never do well, I never achieve, I never accomplish all that is brushed up your life tonight. I need your life. I need a woman. I need your wife. A new mother. A new industrialist. A new technocrat. A new doctor. A new engineer. A new whatever the vision God has put in your life. You are going out of here tonight, reformed, refined by the Lord. Are you going to give him a chance to do that? Will you give him a chance to do that? Let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. One, look back. Look back. You're not looking at the person behind you. Just look back. Everything you've seen behind that had pulled you down, say bye-bye to them. All the mindset, all the pain, all the disappointments, even the sickness, everything, look back and see them and say bye-bye and see you no more. Look forward. Look forward. You'll see progress. You'll see recreation. You'll see a new life. You look back. You look forward. Now you look up. Look up. Don't look down anymore. Don't look down on yourself. Don't look down on your community. Don't look down at anything. I'm there, I'm there. No, you are not down. You are up. Where are you? Look up. Look up. Anytime you face a challenge, you cannot go through, you look right, you look left, you look everywhere, and it appears there is no way. Look up. The Lord will pick you up. The Lord will beautify your life. 
the Lord will grant you a kind of progress you never thought you could have in your life in Jesus' name. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. God told Abraham. Abraham, we all regard him as a father. The Christians and the Muslims. Abraham didn't have a child. And God said, nations will come from him. You will influence and impact nations. And before that conversation finished between God and Abraham, God said, Abraham, look up. Look at all the stars. Look at all the brightness. Look up and see the stars. Your life will be as bright as the stars in heaven. Look at many, many of the stars, how they are spiritually. Your life will be a star. Your company, your family, everywhere you go. Look up. The stars, that's where you're going. And you will outshine all the past image, images you add in your mind. Amen. I am looking up. I am looking up. Raise up that hand now. I'm praying for everyone. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for all your daughters. I pray for my own daughters and sisters and mothers. I pray, Lord, whatever had escaped them in the past, Oh Lord, I pray, bring everything to pass right now in Jesus' name. Wipe out all the bad records of the past, all the foolish acts of the past, everything negative of the past, block their view from their past. Help them to see the mountain top and the peak and the progress in front of them in Jesus' name. Cut all the ropes and all the chains of conditioning around them. And I pray, Lord, as each of them, each of us, as they look up and up and up, there will be magnet from heaven that will pull them up and get them to the desired peak in their lives in Jesus name Amen. and the Lord is sending you forth from here go and make progress Amen. go and shine like a star Amen. go and achieve what you never dreamt of you could achieve before Go and be a change maker. The baby that is born inside you now, the vision that is born inside you now, will not die. You'll be a change maker. You reproduce other, ch other um, change makers. Go in the strength of the Lord. In the power of the Lord, in the confidence of faith. Go forth and be a change maker. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.